A Civil War battle that would help pave the way for the formation of West Virginia, a courthouse dispute in a town built by a self-made millionaire and his politically ambitious son-in-law. I'm Wayne Worth and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 Counties, Randolph County. Long before the industrialists or even the conservationists made their mark on Randolph County, two dudes by the name of Robert Files and David Tigert and their families tried settling the Tigert Valley region near what is today Daly and Beverly. However, this was the 1750s and the natives were opposed to the idea of permanent settlement in this part of the world and through violence would deter early explorers and their families from even thinking about establishing residence here. As for the Tiger and Files family, the Files clan was massacred and a few months later after seeing what happened to their neighbors, David and his family hit the trail and fled the region. Once things settled down by the 1780s, widespread settlement expanded along the Tiger Valley as many took advantage of the vast bottomland for farming. However, tensions in the region would heat up again as the Civil War would make its way to Randolph County. Much of the county's residents prior to the war sided with the Confederacy and even voted in favor of Virginia seceding from the Union. And though the war brought upon several skirmishes throughout Randolph County, the one true battle that would ultimately decide who had control of what was then Western Virginia would be the Battle of Rich Mountain. To make a long story short, on July 11, 1861, General George McClellan and Brigadier General William S. Rosecrans Union forces decisively defeated Colonel John Pegram's Confederate forces as McClellan overran Pegram's men from the front and Rosecrans flanked them from the south. After learning about the Union victory at Rich Mountain, Confederate General Robert S. Garnett and his men who, by the way, occupied Laurel Hill in Barber County, decided to hottail it to Maryland. In the retreat, Garnett was shot and killed at Corks Ford in Tucker County and became the very first general killed in the American Civil War. As for the victory at Rich Mountain, it solidified Union control in Western Virginia, which also had a significant impact on the statehood movement in West Virginia becoming a state in 1863. Post-Civil War Randolph County would see some big changes as big names would bring big industries into the Tigert Valley region. When the politically ambitious Stephen B. Elkins married Hallie Davis in 1875, it was not only a match made in heaven for both he and Hallie, but also a match made in heaven for the young bride's father, Henry Gassaway Davis. Henry Gassaway Davis, who was a self-made millionaire, invited Stephen to be his business partner and extended his West Virginia Central and Pittsburgh Railroad south from Cumberland, Maryland to Randolph County. By 1899, the railroad made it to what is today Elkins, which at that time was nothing more than a vast tract of bottomland. What followed was the building of two new railroad shops and the main headquarters of Henry Gassaway Davis's West Virginia Central and Pittsburgh Railroad. The coming of the railroad to Randolph County also meant major booms in coal and timber as towns like Colton and Norton were big coal mining communities and Pickens, which is nestled in the southwestern edge of the county, became a community centered around big timber and large lumber yards. Even Davis and Elkins College was established in 1904 in Elkins as a Presbyterian college. For over a hundred years, D&E has evolved into a major liberal arts college in West Virginia, providing a wide range of programs from accounting and business to computer science and nursing. On its campus is also the former homes of Henry Gassaway Davis and Stephen B. Elkins, in which the college was named in honor of. With all this immediate growth in the county, especially here in Elkins, the conversation of a new county seat would emerge, creating added tension between the two towns. Well, hostile may be a better word to describe the battle Beverly and Elkins undertook in determining Randolph County's seat of government. The town of Beverly was chartered in 1790 and for more than 100 years was the political and economic center of the county. Beverly was also home to Lemuel Channel with, you know, the dude who built the Philippi Covered Bridge, who by the way was dead by the time both towns were disputing over the county seat. At any rate, Elkins with the coming of the railroad and the dawn of the coal and timber industry overnight became quite the economic and political powerhouse and its residents knew that. So in 1890, its citizens began campaigning to have the county seat moved to Elkins. However, it was shot down in a county-wide referendum. Seeing the ambitious nature of their neighbors to the north, Beverly decided to build a new courthouse in 1894 as a way of saying, hey, try taking our county seat now. Of course, that only added insult to injury for the residents of Elkins, and in 1897, the new courthouse mysteriously burned to the ground. Now, it's been said that shortly after, there was even a plan for a special train to head to Beverly with armed Elkins residents with the mission of taking the county seat by force. 
However, that plan would never come to fruition, and in 1899, a court of law would ultimately rule in favor of Elkins becoming the new county seat. Post-Civil War Randolph County also would bring an influx of German-speaking Swiss immigrants to the region. This all took place in 1869 as 15 immigrants walked four days from the railroad station in Clarksburg to what is today the community of Helvetia. As a result, within 10 years, the population grew to around 400, and though it was a self-sufficient farming community, it also attracted many skilled craftsmen. Of course, this isolation has helped maintain a lot of its Swiss traditions, which still can be seen today. Now, the mid to late 20th century would see a sharp decline in both the coal and timber industries. However, the growth of outdoor recreation and tourism in both Randolph County and the surrounding counties would sustain this region for years to come. The inception of the Monongahela National Forest not only helped save the local and Ohio Valley region from devastating flooding through forest conservation, but it also paved the way for new industries surrounded heritage tourism and recreation. Places like Bemis and other communities along the Shaver's Fork have become serious trout fishing destinations as established campgrounds have sprung up on the eastern end of the county during recent years. And with the county's close proximity to Snowshoe Mountain, Seneca Rocks, Canaan Valley, and the building of Quarter H, Elkins has become a major commercial and retail center in the region. Which takes us right here to the Mountain State Forest Festival, where since 1930, excluding seven years during World War II, has represented the very best of Randolph County's past, present, and future. I'm Wayne Worth, and until next time, always remember, what we value and hold important to our lives today came from events that happened yesterday, and it's when we begin to understand the events of yesterday that we fully embrace today, which makes tomorrow become less of a mystery. Came from events that happened yesterday, and it's when we begin to understand the... It's when we begin to understand it. <laughs>